The sperm and the egg. They meet and then magic happens. But what exactly happens during this miraculous process of fertilization? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So let's do it. Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology where we're making biology fun and we're gonna talk about creating a new human life. And to do this, we first have to understand the basics of the male and female reproductive systems and how they work together during this amazing process. Let's go with the ladies first, because I'm a gentleman. When a baby girl is born, she has all the eggs she will ever have. And that's usually around one to two million eggs. This number decreases as she gets older and by the time she hits puberty, she usually has around 300,000 to 400,000 eggs remaining. These eggs are stored in the ovaries and one egg gets released per month during ovulation. The egg enters the fallopian tube and that's where fertilization can happen. If the egg gets fertilized, there's a bunch of stuff that happens, but we're gonna get into that soon. Good so far? Cool. Now let's hop on over to the men. Unlike women who have all their eggs when they're born, men don't start producing sperm until puberty, which usually happens between the ages of 10 and 14-ish. Once we hit puberty, males will continue producing sperm throughout their lives. The sperm is produced in the testes, and then they go into a structure called the epididymis in order to mature, and that's where they get stored until they are ready to be released. Now, males produce a lot of sperm. I'm talking a healthy male can produce millions of sperm every day, and each ejaculation typically has between 40 million and 300 million sperm. That's a whole lot of sperm. You know, I heard someone say once that in order to ensure the survival of the human race, women only need one shot per month, but a man needed 300 million opportunities with the hopes that at least one of those guys will ask for directions. <laughs> Okay, that was just a joke, and it's not scientific, but at least it made me laugh. Let's get back to the actual details. During sexual intercourse, what happens is the sperm will travel through the vas deferens, and it will mix with seminal fluid from the seminal vesicles, uh, the prostate gland, and the bulbourethral glands to form semen. And this semen then gets expelled during ejaculation through the urethra, which passes through the penis. Now, as I mentioned earlier, around 300 million sperm will enter the vagina during sexual intercourse. Most of them won't survive the acidic environment of the vagina, but some do survive thanks to the protective elements in the seminal fluid. The sperm then pass through the cervix of the woman. This is the opening between the vagina and the lower part of the uterus. The cervix is open during ovulation and the sperm swim through the cervix and into the uterus. Now, I wanna clear something up. When this process of fertilization is normally taught, we hear about an amazing sperm race where the sperm are like brave little soldiers overcoming the harshest of environments, racing towards the egg, out competing all other sperm in a fierce competition. Now, while there is truth to some of that, it's not quite the whole story. The reality is, if it was just up to the sperm to make it to the egg, it ain't gonna happen. The female reproductive system plays an active role during this entire process. The walls of the uterus actually contract in ways to help to move the sperm along. Also, there are chemicals in the female reproductive tract that cause sperm to become hyperactive, swimming harder and faster toward the destination. This process is called capacitation and it prepares the sperm for successful fertilization. Now, in the head of the sperm, there's a specialized organelle called the acrosome. Inside the acrosome, there are enzymes that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But what I want you to know is that the membrane surrounding the acrosome gets modified during this process of capacitation uh, that's facilitated by the fluids in the female reproductive tract. Also, sperm cells, they don't have eyes. They have no idea how to get to their destination. Well, at least not without help. The awesome thing is that the egg will actually release chemicals that help to guide the sperm to the right spot. Almost like a chemical GPS system. I think it's pretty awesome to see how both the male and female reproductive systems, they work together at every step of this process of fertilization to bring an amazing new human into being. It's so cool. Now, once the sperm reaches the egg, the journey isn't complete. The egg is surrounded by a structure called the zona pellucida, which is basically the egg's outer layer. 
This is also surrounded by a layer of cells called the corona radiata. So for fertilization to take place, the sperm has to get through that corona radiata, make contact with the zona pellucida, and then get through the zona pellucida so that it can bind with the egg. This is when that acrosome structure that we spoke about earlier, when it comes into play. As I mentioned, the acrosome contains special enzymes, and these help the sperm break down and penetrate the zona pellucida. For that to happen, the sperm first binds to the zona pellucida using specific receptors on their surface. And this binding, this is what triggers what we call the acrosome reaction, where the enzymes are released from the acrosome to break down the zona pellucida. This allows the sperm to push its way through the zona pellucida so that it can reach and fuse with the egg's plasma membrane. And when that happens, the sperm's genetic material will then enter the egg. Then the egg also goes through some changes that causes the zona pellucida to harden, which prevents other sperm from attaching and entering the egg. That way we get only one sperm fertilizing one egg, which is exactly what we want. Now, inside the egg, a new membrane forms around the male genetic material, creating the male pronucleus. The female genetic material, now awakened by the sperm arrival forms a female pronucleus. The male and female pronuclei join together completing this process of fertilization and creating a unique genetic code that determines traits like gender and hair color and eye color. Now we have a developing zygote. The cilia in the fallopian tube will gently sweep the zygote toward the uterus where it's gonna implant in the uterine lining. And over the next nine months, that zygote will grow, is gonna develop, eventually forming a baby ready to be born, marking the end of this miraculous journey and the beginning of parenthood. And there you have it, the amazing adventure of fertilization from the male and female reproductive systems working together to this incredible journey of the sperm and the cooperative dance with the egg. Now, there's a whole lot more to this process. And if there's a specific part you wanna know more about, let me know in the comments below. My name is Leslie Sama from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.